In this video, we will discuss P53 gene. Firstly, we will see that what a P53 gene actually is. Then we will discuss the role of P53. Then we will see that how P53 works in a normal cell and we will see that what is the pathway involved in the working of P53 in response to DNA damage. At last, we will discuss that how mutations in P53 leads to cancer. So let's start with the definition. P53 is a tumor suppressor gene whose product is a protein that inhibits the neoplastic transformation of cell. Now let's discuss the role of P53. Here you can see that the initial event which stimulates the P53 to work is DNA damage. Whenever the DNA gets damaged due to radiations or any physical factor, this P53 protein is activated and it tries to limit the change to genome, the damage to genome. Now for this purpose, the P53 protein plays two important strategies. The first strategy is that it induces the activation of DNA repair enzymes and meanwhile it puts a temporary arrest on cell cycle. This temporary arrest of, inhibit, this temporary arrest of cell cycle is called quiescence. And the significance of this strategy is to give enough time to DNA repair enzymes before next cell cycle that DNA damage is recovered. Now you can imagine that sometimes DNA damage is so extensive that even DNA repair enzymes are unable to correct it. So here P53 protein plays its second strategy that it inhibits the cell cycle permanently. This permanent cell cycle arrest is called senescence. Meanwhile, it programs the cell with damaged DNA to die by apoptosis. So overall, these two strategies by P53 help to limit the damage to DNA. Otherwise, the damaged DNA, otherwise the cells with damaged DNA would keep on dividing to form a colony of mutated cells, which is called neoplasia. As P53 helps to limit the proliferation of cells with, with damaged genome, so it is also known as guardian of genome. Now we will see the detailed mechanisms and pathway of P53. Firstly, you can see that in normal cells in which there is no DNA damage, the protein P53 is bound to a protein called MDM2. This MDM2 protein targets P53 for destruction and so P53 has nothing to do in cells where there is no DNA damage. So let's see that how DNA damage activates P53 and how P53 helps to counter the effects of DNA damage. So you can see that whenever there is DNA damage, there are some sensor proteins in cells that detect the damage to G DNA. One of these classical sensor proteins is ATM. So whenever these sensor proteins detect DNA damage, they are activated and they cause post-translational modification of P53. After P53 protein is modified by these sensors, it no longer remains bound to MDM2, so P53 is released from MDM2 and persists for a long time to play its role. For this purpose, P53 moves inside the nucleus and it induces transcription of multiple genes. So basically, P53 plays its role by activation of transcription. Now, as we already discussed, that first strategy of P53 is to stop cell cycle temporarily. For this purpose, P53 induces transcription of a protein P21, which is also known as CDKN1A. This P21 protein or CDKN1A protein now binds with cyclin CDK complexes that would be important to promote cell cycle from G1 phase to S phase. But now as P21 is inhibiting these, so cell cycle is arrested at G1 phase and this temporary arrest of cell cycle is called quiescence as we have already discussed. Secondly, the P53 also causes the transcription of DNA repair enzymes so they can work to correct the DNA damage. Thirdly, when the damage to DNA is not repaired even by the first strategy, this P53 increases the transcription of several genes that permanently inhibit cell cycle. And at last, P53 causes transcription of pro-apoptotic proteins that signal the cells to die. So this is the pathway by which P53 performs its function. Now let's see that how mutations in P53 leads to cancer. Suppose there are mutations in both alleles encoding P53 protein. Now if the DNA gets damaged due to any reason, it can produce a big disaster because there is no P53 to induce DNA repair enzymes or cell cycle arrest. So mutated cells will remain permanent and divide continuously to form a colony of mutated cells that will be called as a tumor. Now after we have discussed the important role of P53, the significance of mutations in P53 are beyond any doubt. The amazing fact is that 70% of all cancers have mutations in P53 and remaining 30% of cancers have mutations 
in the other proteins that work upstream or downstream to this p53 pathway so this is the importance of p53 this concludes on our discussion on p53 if you want to study more tutorials like these on pathology you can subscribe to the channel thank you